too restricted and does not open us up to the economic development possibilities and economic benefits that other islands in the Caribbean close around us that cannot produce anywhere near or as good the kind of ganja we produce, the cannabis we produce, are positioning themselves to move ahead in this industry. We have said before, there is a need for Dominica to consider and come to terms with the issues that are involved in humanizing, legalizing, and industrializing cannabis in the interest of national health, wellness, and resilient economic development. And when we included cannabis in a 2014 manifesto or social contract with the people as part of a plan to modernize and grow Dominica's vital agricultural sector, we were guided by the growing legalization of cannabis and the economic potential of cannabis extracts resolving a number of unmet medical needs of patients worldwide. And worldwide, meaning also here in the Commonwealth of Dominica. In this change of government budget year, Dominica will get on board to take advantage of the increasing opportunities for job creation, foreign exchange earnings, and a wealthier nation offered by this plant. In addition, the availability and affordability of cannabis-based medicinal and wellness products will significantly reduce the incidence of non-communicable diseases and thereby lead to a healthier nation. A share of the global cannabis industry can help deliver the lift we desperately need for the rural economy and strong livelihood restoration across the country. As such, our agenda for change will have the legalization of cannabis with strict regulations to protect our children as a pillar to revive the vital agricultural sector in Dominica as a fundamental part of the overall strategy for economic resilience. And Madam Speaker, in terms of fisheries, in terms of fisheries, our fisher folk need assistance to grow their businesses, which will in turn give them the ability to, grow, to produce more. We are determined to implement plans and programs that will achieve that goal, in contrast to the sporadic and selective assistance currently being employed by this administration. The United Workers' Party has devised a program that will not only provide valuable assistance to fisher folk, but will also allow them to grow successful fishing enterprises. The Fisheries Sustainable Growth and Investment Program rests on the premise that fishing is a business and it is necessary to make the investments that will facilitate its profitable growth and long-term sustainability. Financed through a special revolving fund established at the Aid Bank, the Fisheries Sustainable Growth and Development Investment Program will have three components. A business investment package prepared for official folk that will allow them to develop their trade, increase their catch, and facilitate individual long-term economic security. The first phase will comprise of 50 packages with more added as needed. An infrastructure development plan that focuses on modernizing our fisheries infrastructure, docks, piers, terminals, markets, fish houses, and repair facility. A retirement and medical plan that utilizes a portion of monies repaid and places them into a social security retirement account and a medical insurance fund. <laughs> Fully implemented, the FSGIP will position our fisher folk to take advantage of the growing need for fresh fish, both at home and abroad. The business investment portion of SGIP will 
mean is meant to equip our fisher folk with the necessary equipment that allows them to establish, build, and operate successful fisheries operations. It is an opportunity for them to acquire new tools and equipment at extremely favorable terms with minimal outlays. To get the program off the ground, we will provide the initial investment capital to purchase and assemble 50 fisheries investment packages. All fisher folks will be invited to take advantage of this program. It forms part of the United Workers Party plan to stimulate the economy by providing seed capital that will allow our fisher folk to immediately begin building their businesses. Each package my speaker, will include a new fiberglass boat with outboard engine, new safety and medical equipment and supplies, new marine communications equipment, new fish finding equipment. To finance this segment of FSGIP, we will establish a $10 million revolving fund at the Aid Bank. A special unit in the Fisheries Ministry will be established to put together the individual packages and to manage the approval process. In this initial phase, we will make available 50 investment packages fully financed through the fund and payable over a 15-year period with a six-month grace period to keep costs at a minimum for a fisher folk, all equipment will be bat free. <laughs> the Fishery Sustainable Growth and Investment Program is designed to rejuvenate our fisheries industry, which will lead to a secure financial future for our fisher folk. A United Workers' Party government will do what it takes to ensure that our economy is repaired and its productive sectors are once again productive. FSGIP is but one for many planned investments in the future of Dominicans. It will be a major pillar in the economic revitalization of our country. And uh, it, will be, it will be coming in this change of government budget year. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, bearing in mind, we will be expanding the agriculture sector and the focus in the agriculture sector to include the crucial essential oils industry, livestock and dairy, poultry industries to further complement this effort, we'll provide tax and other fiscal incentives to the private sector to invest in agro-processing facilities, fish canning, and other related activities, and marketing and shipping arrangements. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, our Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will be reorganized and staffed in a manner that will successfully drive our new policy towards a sizable segment of the population. Bearing in mind, Mr. Speaker, the tremendous hardships that have befallen our people following Hurricane Maria, the construction sector will be given special attention. This will require some sacrificing of government revenues, but the immediate trade-off will be higher employment in that sector. Specifically, they will be offered a targeted package of exemptions of taxes and duties on imported construction materials. The initiative will undoubtedly lead will rebound in that sector, create upwards of 1,500 new jobs, and help stimulate overall growth in the economy. Linked to this, Mr. Speaker, will be a comprehensive public sector investment program, which I will explain in detail a little later. Another area that will be actively targeted, Madam Speaker, in our attempt, Mr. Speaker, in our attempt to generate the economic growth and jobs that we seek is the services sector. Top of that list is tourism. This is a sector that is constrained by lack of proper air access, high accommodation, and related costs. 
and reduce competitiveness compared to regional countries. As we have stated previously, Mr. Speaker, we will build an eco-friendly, state-of-the-art, international <laughs> However, in the meantime, we will greatly increase spending on marketing for tourism products, including rejuvenating the World Creole Music Festival, DieFest, and we'll also seek for new initiatives in sports and ecotourism. At the same time, we will also provide incentives to hotel and other accommodation owners and target the growth of the cruise industry. With regards to other services, Mr. Speaker, we'll encourage private sector investment, including increased flows of foreign direct investment that can help generate employment, including in retail trade, home industries, craft, and other initiatives. To this end, we commit to creating the enabling environment and putting in place the structural reforms through which prospective investors will play a role in helping to move our country forward. Mr. Speaker. Dominica's tourism. We will, in the tourism sector, leverage the abundant blessings of green bestowed on our nature island to optimize the job creation and other economic benefits of tourism. We will create a nature island visitor economy program of special events, sports, festivals, along with health and education engagements that offer the lovers of nature a safe haven of peace and tranquility in a troubled world. Sharing our idyllic green spaces over time with the majority of human beings on planet Earth will drive strong, sustainable economic growth. The nature island development philosophy that we stand on offers the lovers of nature in this global marketplace a brand in the advancement of civilization that can identify, they can identify with and support to succeed, especially in recognition of the fact the true nature island of the world will automatically become the first climate resilient country of the world. This will be nature's safe haven of peace and tranquility in a troubled world that most human beings on planet Earth would want to visit. Madam Speaker, Dominica's revenue base has stagnated at around 30% of GDP for many years. This is linked directly to the inability of the regime to generate economic growth. As an urgent policy action, we'll aggressively move to increase that base by at least 50% over a three-year period. This will involve a review of the existing tax regime, making more disposable income available by addressing appointments within the government service and increasing the minimum wage. Our speaker, just a note before we proceed on this international airport matter and its significance to the economic infrastructure of Dominica. Yesterday, we were told, again, about plans for an international airport. Page 26 of the printed text circulated says, we believe the solution to our air access challenges in a sustained way is the construction of an international airport. 
Where this is concerned, we have commenced the process to its realization. But, Mr. Speaker, we heard that last year. And I think we heard it the year before. Because years ago, there was this company or group of people in America that was paid an amount of $3.6 million for preliminary studies on the international airport. We tried to find a name, we never found out. But we heard a name mentioned yesterday, Landrum and Brown. And we're wondering now whether Landrum and Brown is the same in, are the same people who received the $3.6 million as of the budget of a couple of years ago, on which there were supplementaries, or whether Landrum and Brown received another $3.6 million as of last year's budget. Questions to be answered. But you know, you know what is amazing, Mr. Speaker? With all the talk about International Airport and all the money, right now, there's supposed to be an airport development account in which $13.5 million is going every month. So if you go back to the time when that started, we should have somewhere in the region of $337 million in that account. But that is consolidated fund money. Where is the money? Where is it? Where is it being held? Is it being held here? Is it being held overseas? Where is the $337 million in the airport development account? Because we see no mention of it either in the statement from the Prime Minister or in the estimates of expenditure that this Honourable House has been asked to approve. Thank you. But here is the, here is the thing. The, the budget statement, is page 26 of the printed text, International Airport. The estimates, the estimates, 2019, 2020. 1,000 U.S. dollars going to any member on the other side who will in their presentation point out where in these 441 pages of the estimate is there any mention of work to be done or provision of money for work to be done on an international airport in the next three financial years according to the public sector investment program. One thousand U.S. dollars. One thousand U.S. dollars for anybody who can show me in this in this budget, this estimate that we've been asking for. Honourable, honourable, money, honourable member, money, please do not. <laughs> money for the construction of an international airport. It does not exist. Continue, continue, please. And I have order, please. Mr. Continue. Speaker, yes. There's another. There's another thousand U.S. dollars. I, I don't think that it is appropriate to do this in the House. Just For continue anybody, with the presentation. But as, but Mr. Uh, uh, Speaker, I withdraw. Okay. But you. I need somebody on the other side as well to tell me where it is provided for a cruise, a new cruise and container port in these estimates of 2019, 2020. That does anybody, on the, does anybody on the other side read? At all? At all? Yeah, you know you are very intelligent people. You went to school, you have university degrees and so on. Of course you read, but do you pay attention to what you bring before this parliament? You were clapping, you were shouting glory to God yesterday when the Prime Minister was talking about his airport. Where is the money in the estimates? Take, take a... Take a Take a, take a back seat. Take a back seat. Okay. Take a back seat. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sorry. Keep. The focus on non-tax revenue will give special attention to the economic citizenship program. We understand that this revenue stream will continue to be an important part of government revenue for some time. Yet, 
Our aim will be to tighten the administrative structure, reporting and accountability. The fee structure will be reviewed and its administrative oversight strengthened on an effort to maximize revenue collections. In addition, Mr. Speaker, other non-tax revenue streams will be similarly revised and changed where appropriate. Grant financing, which for many years provided great source of funding, has declined, as we said, and we will initiate a robust program around the climate change mitigation and implementation measures, which will have the buy-in of the donor community. Projects built around the pursuit of green industry, consistent with the Nature Island concept, will be submitted for grant funding. This will help ease the burden on loan financing and help the financing of the robust public sector investment program, which we plan to undertake. We will, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, stress to the donors or aim of developing alternative renewable energy sources, poverty alleviation, and job creation. The goal is to drive up grant funding to at least 35% of revenue from its current level of around less than 10%. Our goal on current and capital spending, Mr. Speaker, is to streamline government spending by reducing waste and improving efficiency within government operations. This will ensure that current spending on non-wage and interest payments will be kept at the minimum. At the same time, we will immediately implement the Public Procurement Act, which will strictly guide the granting of contracts within our public sector investment program. To further strengthen oversight and to ensure that every cent of public expenditure is accounted for, we will set up within the Ministry of Works a special projects team that will follow through on overseeing project tendering, monitoring, and implementation. The team will also be responsible for identifying public investment projects that strengthen our resilience to climate change adaptation and mitigation, including more severe hurricanes, flooding, and the possibility of other natural, natural disasters. We will explore funding options from donors which will allow us to dramatically increase our spending in those areas. More importantly, Madam Speaker, these projects undertaken will be in support of our stated growth agenda. In particular, we will continue to pursue the development of alternative energy sources, including solar, wind, hydro, geothermal. Successful implementation of these investment projects will lead to reduction in the cost of energy, which is one of the major impediments to growth for buoyant manufacturing and tourism sector. Beyond that, Madam Speaker, we will undertake the rebuilding and refurbishing of our hospitals, schools, bridges, ports, and medical centers across the island. Financing these projects will come from donor financing, loans, and proceeds from the Citizenship by Investment Program. Our robust public sector investment program will be supported with an increased emphasis on stimulating private sector growth. This will take the form of incentive programs for investors wishing to invest in the identified priority areas of agriculture and tourism. A rapid increase in the private sector investment will help spur growth and have the added benefit of freeing up our resources to focus on other areas within the budget. Like the 18 that have gone before it. This budget will facilitate stagnation and further decline in the growth engines of agriculture, tourism, light manufacturing, renewable energy, and the cultural industries. It will allow this oversized cabinet to preside over widening and deepening poverty and joblessness. In terms of climate resilience, Mr. Speaker, we refer to the capacity of a system, community or society potentially exposed to hazards to adopt by resisting or changing in order to reach and maintain an acceptable level of functioning and structure. This is determined 
the experts tell us, by the degree to which the social system is capable of organizing itself to increase its capacity for learning from past disasters, for better future protection, and to improve risk reduction measures. The impact statement for the Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy for 2014-2024, the region, is, quote, safer, more resilient, and sustainable to DEMA participating states through comprehensive disaster management. Five critical areas are factors encapsulated and reflected in the statement, either explicitly or implicitly, which are, number one, the needs to ensure that lives and livelihoods are saved. The need to ensure that property and assets are saved, safeguarded. The concept of resilience is being paramount, being paramount in our understanding of the guiding principles direction at all levels. The critical link between disaster risk reduction and its integration to the National Sustainable Development Agenda can be forged and understood and the need to focus on vulnerable groups and overarching issues related to vulnerability within communities and stakeholders. The Comprehensive Disaster Management Strategy for Dominica cannot be implemented since there is no legislation to drive the strategy. Disaster legislation is still in draft from 2014. This strategy was supposed to be mainstreamed throughout all sectors, ministries, because resilience needs to be mainstreamed. The Office of Disaster Management is understaffed, is ill-equipped, lacks capacity to build the community resilience to hazards and increase the, the country's capacity to respond and recover from hazardous events. This can be achieved through this education, awareness, and training programs within communities. ODM, as we speak, is a very reactive kind of office. And Mr. Speaker, much is made about the boast that we are to become the first climate resilient country in the world. The climate resilient challenge is not new to us. We have been pursuing this low carbon climate resilient strategy since 2012 with support from climate finance donors and development corporation partners. Nonetheless, over $100 million of climate change donor money was available. The resilience we expected never materialized because the Climate Resilience Initiative had no philosophical or cultural moorings, no people consensus, no youth buy-in, and through it all, the foundation principles of democratic governance were excluded from the leadership and management of national affairs. A resilient country means resilient people, united in purpose, working together, all for each, each for all, on the resilient systems of democratic governance. Resilient people means people with resilient sources of food, resilient sources of clothing, resilient shelter, resilient means of livelihood. Resilient people are God-fearing, they're independent, they're empowered people who take individual responsibility for their well-being and progress and commit to collective responsibility for national development and the advancement of global civilization. The 2012 Low Carbon Climate Resilience Strategy told us that Dominica has more than 100 pieces of legislation relating to the environment and natural resource management, some dating back over 100 years, which focus on dealing with specific problems rather than taking on integrated approach to managing natural resources and the environment in a sustainable manner. The strategy revealed, quote, there have been a number of reviews of Dominica's environmental and resource management legislation over the past 15 years, which have all come to the conclusion that comprehensive environmental and natural resource management legislation is an urgent priority in order to prevent irreversible environmental damage to the natural resources upon which Dominica relies for sustained economic and social development. We learned seven years ago, that a review under the Jeff-founded 
Sustainable Land Management Project determined that consolidated environmental and natural resource management legislation is required as an urgent national priority in order to address the gaps and the deficiencies. Consequently, this cabinet of 18 ministers agreed seven long years ago to commence the consultation process to develop and draft comprehensive environmental climate change and development legislation for Dominica in collaboration with the Office of the Attorney General. According to the government's own climate resilient development strategy, this new legislation is expected to establish key legal and institutional frameworks needed to effectively implement Dominica's low carbon climate resilience strategy. Government expects to enact this new legislation by the end of 2012. For more than four years, a draft of the proposed comprehensive legislation, the Climate Change, Environment and Disaster Management Act has been bounced around between consultants and government officials it is yet to reach this Parliament of Dominica for enactment. A whole term of doing nothing about legislation to facilitate climate resilient development is now ending with Cabinet's own report card of failure, which is very cleverly presented in the introduction of the Climate Resilient Executing Agency of Dominica, engineered to do the work Cabinet confirms it cannot do to another Cabinet. So, the legendary cannot do Cabinet is no longer responsible. Others will get it done. And the wish rides on a star that in four to five years, before the end of 2023, when the sun sets on the legislation, Dominica will be the first climate resilient country in the world, laughing in the face of climate change disasters and defeating the ravages of category five storms. For such is the stuff that the dreams of this cannot do cabinet are made of. <laughs> We won, right here in this chamber, when the creed legislation was being debated. We won that there was a need to rationalize and coordinate the work of creed, the Climate Resilient Executing Agency of Dominica, with the various project implementation units that have been established to support ongoing recovery and climate resilient efforts. For example, the project management unit set up under the three World Bank projects, Dominica Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, Dominica Emergency Agriculture Livelihoods and Climate Resilience Project, and Dominica Housing Recovery Project, we advised that a key function of the CREED should be the sole implementing agency for such projects to ensure effective harmonization and coordination. We were ignored. Creed, Mr. Speaker, represents an admission by the Prime Minister and his Cabinet of Ministers that they are incapable of providing the leadership and management required to deliver on the promise to make Dominica the first climate resilient country in the world. The Creed legislation passed in December 2018 effectively reduced, relieved the constitutionally authorized the cabinet of ministers of the fundamental responsibility to build a climate resilient Dominica in every respect and every aspect and pass the sacred national duty to a parallel cabinet, a stranger to the constitution. Now we understand why be careful, for that Be very careful where you're going with this, please because you will get the other side to respond to you, and then members I on want, your side I, will, 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 will suggest that we impute in. Mr. Speaker, I want them to respond. I'm just cautioning you. Yeah, yo, but I want you them will to get respond. responses. I want them to respond okay. to our view on this side. Go ahead. That creed 
is a stranger to the Constitution. I want them to respond to that. As a cabinet, as a cabinet, a parallel cabinet. Okay. But as, so, Mr. Speaker. The screen is not a parallel cabinet. The, you know that. The, the Climate Resilient Executing Agency of Dominica has since been operationalized. But as I was saying, we now know, or we now understand, why is it that neither the champion for the Climate Resilient Executing Agency of Dominica nor the Creed Minister was present in this honorable house for the presentation and the debate of the Creed legislation. So the agency has since been operationalized with a complement of staff based on an approved organizational structure. For the period of its existence, eight months so far, taxpayers of this country have not seen the benefit and cannot soundly justify the existence of such an organization, especially given the high operating budget. Now, Mr. Speaker, the approach to achieving the objectives of SCREED appears to be somewhat suspect. Consequently, since the onset of Creed, it appears that there has been a further level of demotivation among public servants, particularly those in senior positions. These officers who diligently serve in whatever capacity they may be assigned to facilitate, form part of the destruction, of bringing that destruction that we experienced back to some normalcy. The reporting mechanisms between Creed and the public service is in a state of chaos. From all reports, it appears that the role of Creed, if anything, provides another layer in an already saturated bureaucracy. This is particularly hurtful for those who work tirelessly to clean up and supervise re-establishment of road networks after Maria, and instead now proposing some means of allowance or incentives for these patriots, persons who are now being, persons are now being paid exorbitant salaries with full allowances to issue another level of instruction without the provision of additional support or resources to facilitate the daily activities of these officers within the public services. Eight months later, still no Creed Parliamentary Oversight Committee. I understand it will be appointed or named at this session. And information has not been forthcoming on the composition of the Creed Policy Board, which is required to approve projects that Creed will oversee or implement. Remember the, the Lubia to Bagatel Road was earmarked for implementation of the Creed? So what has happened? Furthermore, it appears that the focus of Creed is on climate resilience only in the context of hurricanes. What about other disasters? What is the Creed role in implementation of national resilient development strategy that the Prime Minister referenced? Is that part of Creed's mandate? And if not, what is Creed? We will leave that right there right now. But we want to recall, you know, that after Maria, we had lives to mend, we had people to shelter, we had bodies to feed, we had a broken society to heal, we had farms to replant, an economy to fix. We had roadways and bridges to rebuild, health, education, and utility services to restore, and much, much more. How did we respond? We had our brothers and sisters at home and abroad, the international aid agencies and disaster relief organizations. We had the development cooperation partners. We had the entire global family of countries, people, and governments represented by the United Nations rallying with empathy, rallying with purpose and commitment to assist us in this time of severe humanitarian crisis. We were blessed with courageous, dedicated efforts above and beyond the call of duty from patriots at home and abroad, as well as individuals and organizations from neighboring 
and distant lands to secure a new, improved Dominica. But every time this administration goes back to Maria, it's always to set up some sort of excuse. It's always to set up some sympathy-seeking moment. We thank all those who made their contributions. But there is a forgotten group, a group of forgotten thousands in Dominica, people like me, who repaired their properties and put their lives back together without one red cent, a sheet of galvanize, a block, a piece of wood, or a nail from the state. We are out there as well. You are there as well. Much has been accomplished, but much more needs to be done and would have been further along the recovery road if instead of paying lip service to the truth that it cannot do it alone, the government had, in the spirit of good democratic governance, allowed all ideas to contend and all hands to be on deck. Lest we forget, we had parliamentarians representing over 40% of the electorate in a parliamentary democracy completely shut out of the state's relief, recovery, and reconstruction program funded by the voluntary contributions and tax dollars from Dominica and the rest of the world. Parliament, this parliament, country's highest decision-making body, was completely sidelined to facilitate partisan vote-catching antics. It is going on as we speak. No inclusiveness, no unity of purpose. Instead, we further divided what was not united we continue to insist on no elections of integrity, no fairness, no equity, no equal treatment of all God's children, no respect for the constitutional rule of law, no parliamentary oversight for the operations of government, no acts of parliament to articulate and enforce climate resilient behaviors, no transparency, no accountability, no proper alignment of resources, no to strategic initiative. As a result of the failure to provide sound democratic governance leadership for Dominica's post-disaster management responsibility to date, unity of purpose eluded us, and things fell apart. Lest we forget, food aid was not distributed fairly, equitably, and transparently to all citizens based on need and according to the level of their need. We saw large quantities of relief supplies that could have gone to people in need, expiring either in containers at the port of entry or in the stores of the Office of Disaster Management, and they had to be dumped. Lest we forget, relief supplies for livelihood restoration, grants, and housing recovery assistance paid for by taxpayers at home and abroad were commandeered as property of the Dominican Labour Party and distributed in the names of government. You are again imputing improper motive, in the member. Withdrawn, you are again withdrawn, imputing. Withdrawn. Good. Withdrawn. Withdrawn, withdrawn, withdrawn. So we will leave, we will leave that, we will leave that um, matter. Yeah, Maria, Maria was mentioned about six or seven times yesterday, but um, we, we will not, we will, we will not go any further down. We, we will not, we will not go any further down that road. Some people seem to be very touchy. Mr. Speaker, I, I want to, I just want to make the, the observation, you know, that going back to the tourism, there's a way we, there's a way we think about things and uh, the way we generate ideas. Um, that I think was going to be very useful for the country. We, for example, are committed now to the development of what we call the Three Lakes Project. It's going to bring hundreds of jobs, thousands of tourists, and millions of dollars in tourism to the valley. You know Dominica is blessed with an abundance of natural beauty, unmatched in the Caribbean. But we've been unable to monetize the country's assets to 
the benefit of our people. There are many reasons for that, but one unmistakable fact is the inability of this administration to come up with ideas to develop the country that can lead to long-term prosperity. In the valleys and mountains above our capital lies the beautiful and scenic residential communities of Loda, Trafalgar, Wattenwaven, and Forkali. Surrounding them is nature in abundance, flora, fauna, falls, and lakes. With few exceptions, these assets have not borne economic fruit to these communities and the country at large. We have a plan to reverse that, and we call it the Three Lakes Project. Every year, during the tourist season, thousands of cruise visitors grace our shores looking for places to go, our natural assets to explore. None are capable of visiting our most prized natu natural asset, the Boiling Lake. And that is due to the fact that it's an all-day hike. But imagine if they could. We're going to make that happen. The Three Lakes Project concept is designed to bring hundreds of new jobs, none of which exist presently, to the citizens of the valley. While opening up our lakes to visit the traffic, it includes the construction of an aerial tramway connecting all three lakes. The concept has five phases, the first four of which will be constructed concurrently. Number one, visitor reception terminal at Loda will be built. The facility will function as a terminal and will include a number of amenities, including restaurants, dining capabilities, washrooms, rest areas, and a welcome center where visitors will be able to purchase their passes to ride the shuttle to and from. There will also be a designated parking area for all vehicles. No vehicle will be permitted to travel to the Freshwater Lake. This terminal will also serve as a jump off point for visitors to Titu Gorge and the surrounding valley. We will have a light, open air rail system the system will use the current road and will link the freshwater lake to the visitor reception terminal visitors to the lakes must park their vehicles at the terminal's parking areas and choose either to hike or take the rail shuttle to the freshwater lake we will have an aerial tramway terminal at Freshwater Lake to be constructed there. The terminal will be the ho home platform for the tramway system and will be staffed by additional tour guides and maintenance staff. From this terminal, visitors will be able to walk to the Freshwater Lake or they may choose to board fully enclosed but transparent gondolas for a ride that will take them over the Freshwater Lake to the Borden Lake while enjoying the views of the mountains and valleys beneath them, each gondola will have a tour guide. We'll have a viewing and reception platform above the Borden Lake. A tramway terminal will be built there and will include a viewing platform that allows visitors to look down at the Borden Lake from above. The terminal will include a sitting area, looking points with long range viewing binoculars and a restaurant and will be staffed by more tour guides. A hike trail will be built from this platform, the Valley of Desolation, allowing hikers to make the trip if they so desire. And then we'll have the aerial tramway to Bury Lake. This will be extended to facilitate the construction of a second aerial system to the Bury Lake. When completed, any citizen or visitor will be able to, for the first time, visit all three lakes in one day. <laughs> to support this project, to support this project, funding will be made available to expand the roads leading up to Loda with safety being a top concern. When completed, hundreds of new jobs will be created, tour guides, tramway operators, bus operators, staffing at the reception area, percentage of the fees collected will go directly to the village councils in the valley. Fully completed, the Three Lakes project will generate millions upon millions of dollars in new revenue every year from visitors to our shores. 
It will also create hundreds of new jobs in the tourism industry, whether it may be tour guides, maintenance staff, gondola operators, restauranteurs, or bus drivers. These jobs are non-existent today, but we will bring them to life when elected to office. The fees collected will be able to finance many other projects in the Valley, including the much needed improvements identified by the local village councils. Last week in terms of energy, electricity rates in Dominica are high, about twice the regional average. And it's a serious burden on citizens and over 60% of the business community cite the high cost of electricity as a major constraint to doing business. The geothermal project on which money is again going to be spent in this budget is all about the seven megawatt plant which has to be part of the renewable energy solution aimed at reducing the cost of electricity to less than 10 cents per kilowatt hour. This price must include servicing and maintenance costs, as well as costs to service the loan from construction. It is essential, Madam Speaker, that the power purchase agreement to be concluded with Dominic includes a requirement that the consumer price for electricity be kept as close to this level as possible if Dominica is to attract investments into a more cost competitive business environment. Madam Speaker, we have a commitment that we will transform our transportation infrastructure for participation in international trade of goods and services with the construction of the airport, the expansion and modernization of our seaports for efficient movement of people and cargo. We will build a modern public transportation system with clean energy vehicles and bus terminals that will facilitate safe, on time, comfortable travel for school, business, work or leisure to people in all areas of Dominica. Now, Speaker, our nature island of the world philosophy opens the doors to significant new economic growth and job creation opportunities from the many export industries that will be created among, around our herbs and spices and our flowers. We will set up, and we mentioned this last year, a $200 million fund to provide seed financing and guarantees for new and existing export manufacturing operations. The Nature Island Private Sector Transformation Fund will be financed by passport revenues and donor grants to facilitate the creation of at least 3,000 new jobs by 2021. It will facilitate the emergence and profitable growth of export industries in agriculture, in tourism, renewable energy, arts and culture, along with new ICT-based ventures in artificial intelligence and robotics. With the termination of the use of disposable plastic plates and cups, we will provide appropriate incentives to local entrepreneurs to establish facilities for the production of disposable containers from the leaves and stems of bananas and other suitable plants. This will create new jobs and earn vital income from exports to regional markets. The Nature Island Private Sector Transformation Fund will finance modern manufacturing plants for the production of essential oils, condiments, teas, health and wellness foods, and skin care formulations. And speaker, the music industry is worth $130 billion globally. 
is trivialized and largely disregarded over the years by the current regime. And despite significant contribu contributions from local talent to the art form and the creation of the Kadash genre, Buyo as well, there is a lack of serious effort to create a vibrant local industry with the potential to capture international niche markets. The Association of Music Professionals needs now to be empowered and elevated to a national body fueled by government subventions until it is able to sustain itself. Immediate attention will be placed on providing training in all facets of music and music production within the TBEC framework and the granting of scholarships to students willing to pursue training in functional and classical music, performing arts, sound engineering certification, legal practitioners' competence in entertainment law. Sustainable development of the art form as a tourism product and contemporary culture. We will implement mentoring programs at primary schools using the skills and competencies of our leading artists. The cost of losing these talents is greater than the cost of producing thousands of brilliant musicians. Music will be a major component of the national export strategy, which will help manage the, use, the issue of crime and violence through the creation of an alternative medium wherein youth could be mentored and gainfully employed. We need to forge a concept that the industry is sustainably hinged on pride in country, which could be ingrained at an early age by ensuring that all schools are staffed with teachers who are trained in music. Our speaker. I want to deal now with a matter on account of the loud, inexplicable silence on the Venezuela Petro Carib controversy, which causes us to distrust the estimates. Just imagine the Prime Minister who has asked the world to help Dominica become the first climate resilient nation in the world is the same man who publicly denied for years in this parliament a debt of over $100 million owed to Venezuela and then turned around and accepted forgiveness of the same debt he insisted Dominica did not owe. And no, no, it is not insignificant that the Prime Minister was forced to accept the debt he previously denied in the presence of eight donors, development corporation partners, and the governments from around the world assembled at a high-level pledging conference for Dominica and other hurricane-affected islands in the region. We asked at the time of the debt cancellation and subsequently in this parliament in May of 2018 for a full accounting of the more than 100 million US dollars the Prime Minister now accepts Dominica owes after Venezuela, owes Venezuela after telling this, this parliament and the country that there was no such debt. We asked who received the Venezuela loan of more than 100 US dollars and how and when and into what account it was received. We asked what was the loan money used for and on behalf of Dominica to date. What is the balance available from the loan funds at the date of forgiveness? And how soon will the entity holding the loan from Venezuela to Dominica present a check to the government for the 100 million US dollars, less any amounts legitimately spent on on behalf of Dominica? We are still waiting in this parliament where the question was asked for a satisfactory answer. Then the Venezuelan foreign minister, Jorge Areza, made a major announcement. November 21st, 2017, quote, due to the difficult conditions facing our beloved brethren in Dominica after the passage of Hurricane Maria, Venezuela is announcing the start of a process of debt forgiveness in the short and long term for supplies of Petro Carib from its creation until September 
2017. This means the cancellation of a sovereign debt that exceeds US $100 million in order to allow the government of Prime Minister Roosevelt's carriage funds for the reconstruction of his country, as well as the creation of a fiscal space that allows access to new credits. The Finance Minister, Madam Speaker, told us in this Parliament on May 1st, 2018, quote, the cancellation of the debt, the 100 million US dollars which Venezuela has indicated, it is based on their fuel supply of petroleum products over the life of the Petro-Caribe arrangement. That is the 40%. He continues, so what has been done now is since he made the announcement, there is a reconciliation of invoices and bills and receipts because in his agreement, you have three different players. You have PDVSA, which is the National Petroleum Company of Venezuela, who is a supplier of the petroleum products. You have the joint venture of this with the Venezuela and the Dominica, and you have a wholly owned state company, Dominica National Petroleum Company, who holds a 40% deferred amount in trust. Once this reconciliation is done, the Prime Minister told this House, those funds will be sent from the joint venture to DNPC, and DNPC will now transfer these funds to the Treasury of Dominica, to the Consolidated Fund, to be used for national development projects to respond to the disaster and other aspects in Dominica. The money has been held by DNPC, a wholly owned subsidiary of the government of Dominica. So what other money from the debt does the joint venture company have to transfer to the Treasury? It is the DNPC, the government's company, that must transfer the funds to the government Treasury. We have said the struggling people of Venezuela and the hurricane-affected people of Dominica, whom the Venezuelans have made a huge sacrifice to help, simply want to know where is the money. Where is the money? 100 million US dollars. 270 million EC dollars. Last year, Madam Speaker, I drew Parliament's attention to what appeared to be a discrepancy of 140.7 million dollars in the balance of the citizenship by investment account reported by the Finance Minister as of June 30th, 2017. The explanation given for the discrepancy is that $13.5 million is being transferred monthly from the CBI account to an airport development account. <laughs> but the $149 million said to be in the account as at May 31st, 2018, means without more that the airport account transfers took place in the financial year commencing on the 1st of July 2017 and therefore had nothing to do with the balance on the CBI account at the end of the previous year, June 30th, 2017. Again, we need a proper explanation. What happened to the 140.7 million? Where the money gone? We also need confirmation, I referred to it earlier, of the 337.5 million estimated to be in the airport development account as at today's date, the 31st of July, 2019. This is consolidated fund money. Where is it being held? Is it in Dominica? And if it is not in Dominica, under what lawful authority is it being held overseas? $140.7 million plus $337.5 million equals to $488.2 million. The people of Dominica want to know the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth right. about these millions from the city of Passport. This year, Madam Speaker, the estimates disclose. Can, can you please lend me your estimates, Danny? Thank you very much. <laughs> these estimates disclose, Madam Speaker. that revenues 
from the famous Citizenship by Investment Program in 2018-2019 was $226 million. 180.6 million or 44% less than the budgeted amount of 406 million. Now we have a huge problem. Something is not right. Something is not right. Madam Speaker, this is the official gazette of Thursday, March 14th. 2019, the official gazette. Pages 87 to 121. The Financial Secretary of the Commonwealth of Dominica, Rosman Edwards, reports in this gazette a list of, quote, successful applicants under the Citizenship by Investment Program yes, for the period August of 2018 to December of 2018. Five of the first six months of the financial year 2018-2019. And the list includes in position number one Omar Khaled Omar Barras. We can check for the one at number position number 100. Ding Zhu. Number 176. Abdul Hakim Ayman Abdul Hakim Al Kaloub. And we go to the pages all the way down to number 3961. Halat Moshin Saleh Al Kani. Number 300 and number 3000. 961. So let's recap. This is a little math lesson. 3,961 persons received the passports of Dominica in the five month period, August to December of 2018. Remember I asked you all whether you read the documents that come to you. Are there a reason for that? Because our passports, our passports are being sold for 100,000 US dollars each. But there are persons who get passports as part of a family package. For example, where the price to each member would average out at about 56.25 thousand US dollars, not 100,000. And investors in hotel projects are required to pay 50,000 US dollars per passport into the treasury. So we are going to assume that the average price paid for each of the 3,961 CBI passports sold between August and December of last year was not $100,000, but half of that, $50,000. Each of them. Multiply now. You have a calculator? 3,961 passports at US 50,000 per passport is equal to 198 million US dollars or 537.9 million EC dollars. Remember the figure reported in these estimates or revenue for the whole year, not five months, the whole 12 months, the figure reported is 226 million dollars. But we didn't sell we didn't sell passports for the five months alone. The figure they gave us they not for five months for the whole year. So let us do the math. For the whole year, five months, 537 million. Full year, we prorate and we project 1 billion, 291 million dollars. That is what the evidence suggests. 1 billion, 
291 million dollars how did we end up with only 226 million over 1 billion dollars less where the money gone Madam Speaker, this is not a joke, you know. This is serious business. that more than doubles the entire year outturn from the five months, five months in 2018. Yeah, is it? Yeah, is it? That's because they're getting smart now. They're all getting, they're all getting wise now. I have opened their eyes. One billion, one billion, Two hundred and ninety-one million dollars is more like the revenue outturn from citizenship by investment for 2018 2019 they have reported they have reported 226 million dollars my speaker the united workers party stands ready to lead the change that Dominica needs after the colossal governance failures that reduce Dominica to, in, to the dignity of poverty, joblessness, and dependency over the past two decades. Shh. Shh. Quiet. Order in the house. Um, remember, um, I, I hear a lot of noise coming from your side. You should tell them to be quiet, too. I, I, I said the house man speak. I mean everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Stay, Good. Stay As you didn't turn behind, they may think it's just those on the other side. No, 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 no. Everybody man speak. The house. More than in the house. <laughs> Dominica deserves better, man speaker. The people of this blessed nature island need a fresh start and real change. There is no question in their minds that the United Workers Party is that real change. This is why this is why we stand equipped and ready. We stand equipped and we stand ready to receive the people's mandate to lead and to manage the affairs in government. In this, the final budget presentation in the current parliamentary term, we state for the record and for the avoidance of doubt that we will reduce the size of cabinet, the size and cost of cabinet by at least 40%. We'll introduce, we will introduce development of nature island people, education and training programs for schools and workplaces across Dominica. We will facilitate the critical role of women in creating and nurturing a balanced, harmonious, thriving nation. Maternity leave will be increased to 16 weeks. We will secure our children from neglect and abuse and ground them in the discipline of successful global citizenship. We will upgrade the salaries of all public officers to make them competitive with the salaries paid to public officers in OECS countries. A 3% salary increase for all public officers will be provided for in this change of government budget year. We will ensure that it makes personal economic sense to be a nurse, a teacher, and a police officer in Dominica. We will appoint all public officers 
who are serving for more than one year without an appointment. We will build a national work ethic in which public officers are committed to serving the state instead of being forced to enslave themselves to the will of government ministers. We will bring an immediate end to the practice of using the resources of Dominica to benefit outside interests with multi-million dollar contracts for work Dominicans are ready, willing, and able to do. Madam Speaker, this is a country with more sand, with more stone, with more water per head of population than anywhere else in the region. And this administration is importing concrete slabs to build houses in Dominica, technically meaning they're importing sand, they're importing stone, they're importing water, and they're importing labor in Dominica. And they're starving the people of Dominica. Madam Speaker, we will create a new sustainable nature and economy with agriculture, tourism, renewable energy, information communication technology, the cultural industries, and the water industry as major pillars. We will grow the economy by 5 to 7 percent a year, create 12,000 new jobs by 2025, and increase the minimum wage and old age pensions by no less than 50 percent such that no one in Dominica should have to work for less than $1,000 monthly, and increased pensions to senior citizens from the public purse will be no less than $500 monthly. <laughs> we will reduce the cost and maximize the ease of investing and doing business in Dominica. We will restore livelihoods and bring back regular income to the families in the farming communities of Dominica. This means enacting legislation and regulations to legalize, grow, process, and export cannabis and cannabis-based health and wellness products. We will provide agricultural inputs and farm labor financial assistance grants to farmers to boost output of a range of high-value products for export. We will purchase at least two refrigerated vessels to transport Nature Island branded primary products and process agricultural products in the Caribbean. We will provide low interest loans, financial grants and appropriate fiscal incentives to deserving tourist service providers and manufacturers for refinancing, refurbishment and expansion of the establishment. We will construct an eco-friendly, state-of-the-art international airport. We will expand and modernize our seaports we will open the daily Spitic Savan Road and complete the Roseau reinstatement project. Overall, we will upgrade our world network and bridges to the highest standards of resilience to natural, to natural disasters. We will fully reinstate, restructure, and operationalize the Public Works Corporation. We'll eliminate Dominica's dependence on fossil fuels and reduce the cost of energy by at least 30 percent within five years. We will ensure there's fairness, equity, proper accountability, and no political interference in government's housing assistance program. <laughs> we'll provide duty-free importation of all building materials on an initial period of three years. We'll expand the portfolio of the Minister of Kalanago Affairs and amend the Kalanago Act to meet the needs of our Kalanago brothers and sisters. We will restore primary health care and upgrade tertiary health care. The state, the state will pay the tuition fees of all the sons and daughters of Dominica attending the Dominica State College for the avoidance of doubt. The avoidance of doubt. We will, we will, we will criminalize the sale of diplomatic passports 
and the abuse and or misappropriation of revenues from the sale of passports. We will criminalize discrimination and victimization against citizens denied assistance from the public purse to which they are entitled for human development needs. We call on our brothers and sisters of this nature island to continue to put the country first, irrespective of partisan allegiance. There we are. Let us not, let us not place party before people and country and let us unite over this common desire for change knowing that those whose failure and destruction we seek to change from cannot present us with the change that we need. Healthcare is in a deplorable state in Dominica. We have, we have a responsibility, Madam Speaker, to ensure, we have a responsibility to ensure that this situation is fixed. I had opportunity recently to be by the side of a friend who, whose wife is in the ICU and uh, it's painful Madam Speaker while we talk about healthcare and services and we talk, talk about what's to come and we have this fancy machine that will do this and do that. Right now as we speak, there is no functioning CT scan machine at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Oh, and for something like that, for something like that, Dominicans have to leave here, find themselves on an air ambulance at exorbitant cost to find themselves in Martinique or some neighboring country. And, and, and just the arrangements to facilitate people who ordinarily are not involved in that sort of thing, they've come just seeking medical attention from the hospital. What they have to go through just to get their family member to that next destination in the region where they can get care is really not acceptable. And so when we think of healthcare, the priority for us has to be hospitals, functioning hospitals, in at least four areas of Dominica, along with a whole set of support clinics in the different zones. What passes for a hospital in Portsmouth is not a hospital. We need to give Portsmouth a proper hospital, a proper general hospital. And we can start to do that in this financial year. Marigot needs a trauma and acute care hospital. We can do that in this year. TMH is in development, all service, and Grand Bay needs a proper hospital. The health of the nation is the wealth of the nation. We cannot talk about progress and development without proper health care because we all need that to function effectively and productively and to be the best that we can be for our country. Tell me forward sons and daughters. <laughs> of this gem beyond compare, strive for honor sons and daughters. Do the right. Do the right. Be firm. Be fair. Toil with hearts and hands and voices. We must prosper. Sound the call in which everyone rejoices. All for each.
and each for all. May the ancestors be pleased. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Finally, Madam Speaker, you know, I, I, I really felt sorry for the leader of the opposition, Madam Speaker. After listening to him, Madam Speaker, it, it is clear to me that that is a leader of the opposition that is in panic mode, Madam Speaker. Nervous. The reality is facing the leader of the opposition head on, Madam Speaker. And he is certainly a nervous politician, Madam Speaker. That is what is happening. Madam Speaker, for you to tell me that we have sat in this house and the leader of the opposition can leave if he wants because he has a problem dealing with the truth. And we saw that and we have seen that throughout the years of being here, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, but for the leader of the opposition now, on the eve of an election, to be lamenting, Madam Speaker, about his constituency, it shows the lack of representation that had been given to Marigold, Madam Speaker. For the leader of the opposition to be lamenting about the neglect, Madam Speaker, of the Marigold constituency, it shows the lack of representation provided in and out of the House of Assembly throughout the years of this parliamentary representative. Madam Speaker, when the former parliamentary representative Edison James was in this house, Madam Speaker, when he was parliamentary representative for the Marigot constituency, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister, and the leader of the opposition then had a cordial relationship, Madam Speaker. They spoke and they dialogued about issues affecting the Marigot constituency. Madam Speaker, I myself personally remember the former leader of the opposition and parliamentary representative for Marigot, riding in the same vehicle with the Honorable Prime Minister up to Marigot to deal with issues affecting the Marigot constituency, Madam Speaker. And not only the Prime Minister visited the Marigot constituency with the former parliamentary representative, immediately after that visit was concluded, $2.5 million was committed and made available, Madam Speaker, to the Marigot constituency for issues to be dealt with, Madam Speaker. That is what, that is what parliamentary representation is all about. Championing the cause of your constituency, Madam Speaker. But when we hear the leader of the opposition talking about championing the cause of his constituency, it's like a fish market, going to a fish market. It tells you that that is not a parliamentary representative that is serious about the people of his constituency, Madam Speaker. Funds were made available, Madam Speaker, after Hurricane Maria. Funds were made available, I believe one million dollars was made available to the Marigold constituency through the Marigold Village Council for renovation and repair works to be done on homes in the Marigold constituency. Right now, as we speak, Madam Speaker, there are funds sitting in the Marigold Village Council that the Parliament representative and leader of the opposition seems to know nothing about, Madam Speaker, because he's not in Marigot. He doesn't know about the issues affecting the Marigot constituency. I mean, when a parliamentary representative has to make a video and put it online, lamenting about issues in your constituency, it tells you, Madam Speaker, that that is a parliamentary representative that is not in touch with his constituency. Only two requests, only two requests made in five years of your parliamentary representation, a request for a duty free for someone, a duty free on a vehicle, Madam Speaker, 
That is what Paul reps do as run of the mill man and speaker. We do that on the side. Apasa, we go for duty free. Concessions, Madam Speaker, on vehicles and medical funds for one constituent, Madam Speaker. These are the all, which was, by the way, immediately approved, as is the case, Madam Speaker. Only two requests made by the leader of the opposition of the government in five years, Madam Speaker. And he sits there with a litany, Madam Speaker, of requests, trying to create an impression that he had been championing the cause of his constituency all those years, Madam Speaker. That is the lack of parliamentary representation. And the Marigot people will speak in loud and vociferous terms, Madam Speaker, when they go to the polls at the next general election, Madam Speaker. That is it. Madam Speaker, and you see, when God is with you, no man can be against you, no Madam Speaker. Because a candidate was declared for the Marigot constituency and immediately attacked the, the lady, Madam Speaker. Immediately attacked the lady. And as fate would have it, God sent the ideal candidate to represent the people of the Marigot constituency, Madam Speaker. And we are sure, we are sure that the Marigot people will do the right thing when the time is appropriate for them to so do, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the leader of the opposition is lamenting about the time that had been given for his preparation. But the same estimates that he bandied about, Madam Speaker, was is circulated to every member of the House well in advance of the sitting of the House. All of the estimates, you can take the estimates, sit down at your home and go through the estimates and prepare your contribution to the budget, Madam Speaker. What is he complaining about? The same public servants that you chastise in for not giving you the information, you come back later on in the presentation and you want to praise the same public servants, Madam Speaker. That is, Madam Speaker, a, a, an individual who is not sure of where he stands on issues. And we see it throughout, Madam Speaker, throughout his presentation, we see it, Madam Speaker. We talk about, and he spoke about electoral reform. I mean, talking about electoral reform, is that, is, is that a joke, Madam Speaker? Are we making a joke with the people of this country? Are we taking people seriously? Madam Speaker, monies had been appropriated for electoral reform by this government. We came to this honorable house to make the amendments to the act, Madam Speaker. We came to this house to debate and to pass the necessary amendments to enable the same electoral reform that they're talking about. And we saw the band of hooligans outside of the House of Assembly causing trouble to the point where the sitting of the House on that debate had to be suspended, Madam Speaker. Hooligans outside of the House, Madam Speaker. Gathering stones, Madam Speaker. And causing security issues for the police to the point where the Prime Minister had to suspend the debate on the amendments to the Act, Madam Speaker. So when we see the leader of the opposition coming here speaking about electoral reform, we know that they're not serious about electoral reform, Madam Speaker. They're pandering to the electorate, Madam Speaker. That is what they are doing. Talking about change? Talking about change? Madam Speaker, the change is already occurring in Dominica, Madam Speaker. Change has already occurred and is occurring in the Commonwealth of Dominica, Madam Speaker. We see it and we know it. This is the most revolutionary and progressive budget ever passed in the history of post-independence, Dominica. Madam Speaker. Just 18 months, wait. 18 months, you know. 18 months, not even two years since the passage of Hurricane Maria. 18 months since we had the worst disaster known to man, Madam Speaker. Not only in the Western Hemisphere, not only in the Western Hemisphere, Madam Speaker, I may say the worst hurricane known to man in the world hit Dominica, Madam Speaker. 225% of our gross domestic product wiped out in three hours, Madam Speaker. Absolutely wiped out. Everything we held dear to us as Dominicans was devastated. Some people even had to mourn the loss of their dead loved ones, Madam Speaker. 
persons up to this date cannot be found. This is the seriousness of the disaster, Madam Speaker, that we had to undergo. We were thrown to the ground, Madam Speaker. At that time, where were the members of the opposition? Where were the members of the opposition? Not one of them could be seen, Madam Speaker. Not one of them could be seen helping constituents, Madam Speaker. Not one of them, Madam Speaker. 226 percent of our GDP. But Madam Speaker, God is good. God is good. And look at Dominica today. Less than two years after Hurricane Maria. Look at our country today, Madam Speaker. So we have a Prime Minister and we have a leader who mere days after the hurricane tied his bootstraps, Madam Speaker, tightened his belt and went out of the country, Madam Speaker, like a champion to the United Nations and pleaded with the world to come to the assistance of the Commonwealth of Dominica to make Dominica the first climate resilient country in the world, Madam Speaker. That is what leadership is all about, Madam Speaker. And that is why we say leadership matters. And we contrast that with a leader of the opposition, Madam Speaker, who going wrong the world in the same vein, Madam Speaker, but to make the country poorer, Madam Speaker. I'm hearing the leader of the opposition speaking about all that, what he will do with the citizenship by investment funds? Am I, am I living in the same Dominica we were two years ago? Huh? That same individual left his country. I mean, at the end of the day, we can play our politics in Dominica, comrades. We play our politics, and politics is adversarial and contentious, and we're seeking votes, and we do our thing in Dominica. But when we board a plane or we board a boat, the minute you, you step foot on a foreign land, you are ambassadors for the commonwealth of Dominica. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a United Workers Party person or a Labour person. You are ambassadors for the commonwealth of Dominica. And the man went on one of the most watched television shows in America and perhaps in the world, Madam Speaker. And the same citizenship by investment money he's talking about. He jeopardized the future of the program by saying it's a mail to order program. A mail to order program. Madam Speaker, thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Madam. On a CBS interview, and said we had a mail to order program. And, and the leader of the opposition is not stopping his behavior. And his pattern continues. He is one person in Dominica, in the country. Madam Speaker, he's a different person out of the country. So he tells, he stands in Dominica at the Goodwill Parish Hall, and he tells the world to vote where you live. And he jumps on a plane and goes to a foreign land and says, everybody should come back home to vote, Madam I heard the leader of the opposition on Saturday in Antigua, Madam Speaker, Again, denigrating the country of his birth. Is that proper representation, Madam Speaker? Is that what a proper ambassador for the country should be, Madam Speaker? That is what we have. And when we look at the record, you know, I mean, you know, thank God that the United Workers Party was in government, you know, before, you know. Because had this party not been in government, I tell you, I mean, we would not know the type of, 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 of persons, Madam Speaker, as far as management of the resources of the state is concerned. United Workers Party was in government from 1995 to 2000. And when the United Workers Party and the leader of the opposition was a major advisor to the then Prime Minister when they were in government, Madam Speaker, he was there. Yeah. When we came, Madam Speaker, we inherited a country that was virtu virtually bankrupt. Bankrupt. An empty treasury, Madam Speaker. Two hundred and seventy-six million dollar deficit on the consolidated fund. You know what the consolidated fund? That is money in the treasury. I'm not a financial guru, the FS is here. But my layman's term tell me that the consolidated fund is money in the treasury. A deficit of two hundred and seventy-six million dollars. And you there now trying to advise the country and government about governance and management of the economy. 
Madam Speaker, $87 million overdraft at the National Bank of Dominica. Overdraft. You all could have run the bank into the ground, Madam Speaker. That is why when the IMF came during the austerity program, eh, and I'm saying that because a lot of children today, a lot of 19 year olds and 8 year olds who will be voting that return, they don't know those facts, Madam Speaker. The first thing the IMF told the country and the government was divest your majority shares in the national bank. So never again a government can take advantage of the public resources the way that the 1995 2000 euro repeal regime did in this country, Madam Speaker. <laughs> talking about management, the leader of the opposition talking about management of the economy, Madam Speaker. There were 53 million dollars in the treasury that checks could not be paid because there was no money against which you could pay those checks. If you had issued those checks, they would have bonked, Madam Speaker, during the years of the United Workers Party. That is the level of my, and today we have a budget here that we can all be proud of. That budget has everything for everybody in this country, Madam Speaker. And we have in this house, Madam Speaker. I mean, come on, come on, Madam Speaker. Public officers, the same public officers that the leader of the opposition is talking about now, you want to give them 10% and 15% increase, Madam Speaker, they could not get paid on time. Public officers, 30th of the month, today is what the 30th of the month, like now. If you were in 1990 or 1997, you had to wait till the 20th of August next month to get your salary for the month of July, Madam Speaker. That is what happened in our country. And we were told, we were told that the computer breaks Order, down. please. The computer breaks Order, down. Order, please. Order, please. So, Prime Minister, you have a different computer now, then? You have a different brand of computer now? I want to know, because I... Because since this government has been in office, there has not been one month, Madam Speaker, where we have missed payments of public service. Not one month. Computer hasn't broken down not one month, Madam Speaker. That is the level of management. So we have to do the comparison, Madam Speaker. We have to look, we have to make a historical analysis of that. You all have to come here first and say, Mia culpa, Mia culpa first. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. That is what you have to say in this house before we go forward, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, private institutions, private institutions. I don't want to call any of those private institutions, Madam Speaker, but big businessmen and, and foreign governments, Madam Speaker, had to lend us money to pay salaries, Madam Speaker. Had to give the government loans at the time to pay them, not us, to pay public servants. That was the state of the country, Madam Speaker. And we listening to the leader of the opposition. We told you that the government has stashed away $335 million. The first government ever to save money for the construction of the international airport, Madam Speaker. You know what? The United Locust Party in their time did. Let us make the comparison and do the analysis. Madam Speaker, when the Prime Minister told them yesterday, the, the, the firm responsible for doing the, the, the preliminary studies, they chuckled and they laughed, Madam Speaker. But they hired a firm in 1997-98 called Planning and Stand Tech, Madam Speaker. And the World Bank told them that the studies that they got on the international airport was physically impossible, Madam Speaker, and financially unsustainable. The, the World Bank, won the same World Bank that's advising us today for the development of the real international airport, told them that it was unsustainable, Madam Speaker. The, 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 the World Bank warned them, Madam Speaker, and still they pursued Still, they pursued the United Workers Party, went to Trinidad and Tobago, Madam Speaker, and they borrowed a hundred and fourteen million dollars at fourteen percent interest. If you're building a house, your home right now, and you go to the bank or you go to the credit union and they tell you about ten percent, you're even shaking your boots ten percent. 
loans right now in Dominica for building are given at what probably six and seven percent. You take in a loan on the backs of Dominicans at fourteen percent, and the leader of the opposition is banding the estimates about saying that he's not even seeing where the loan is still being paid back today. Today, today, Madam Speaker, today, um, we still please, be... please, a um, member, try to. So you, you yourself. The member for Rosso North, will you subdue yourself if you can do it? It will have to be done for you. <laughs> Madam Speaker, fourteen million dollars had to be paid every year since the contracting of that loan in 1999. Fourteen million dollars. Over 20 years had to be paid 280 million dollars of Dominican sweat and tears had to go to Trinidad, Madam Speaker, to pay back that loan. Our social security money, Madam Speaker, social security had to pledge, Madam Speaker, another 26 million to put into a sinking fund, Madam Speaker, for that loan to be contracted. And 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 tell the leader of the opposition to sit down and read the estimates because the debt of the sinking fund is in the estimates, Madam Speaker. Let him look for it. Let him look for it, Madam Speaker. Let him look for it. Sit down and do your homework. Sit down and do your homework. Because you know, you know, Madam Speaker, this United Workers Party have not changed their ways. They have not repented, Madam Speaker, of their misdeeds towards the country when they were in government, Madam Speaker. The same party who came to the farmers promising a dollar a pound of bananas is coming back today in this honorable house, six months or so, or nine months or whatever, before a general election, making the same promises they know that they cannot fulfill to the Dominican people. Same politics. Madam Speaker, not one dollar has been raised. Not one dollar has been raised by the opposition. When we were when we were in opposition, when the Dominican Labour Party was in opposition in 1979, when 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 we were in opposition in 1979, when Hurricane David struck this country, Madam Speaker, the leaders of the opposition in the Labour Party went out of the country and raised millions from the non-aligned movement, 36 or so million dollars from the non-aligned movement to come to help in the recovery of the country, Madam Speaker. That is what we, did, that's what we have done. Not one dollar you all can raise. Not one dollar to help somebody in your constituency. Not a galvanize you can buy. Not a nail you can buy for somebody. Huh? I mean, not that, not that team of workers. Okay, forget about the money. Maybe you don't have the resources. Not a team you can mobilize for the country. Madam Speaker, and we, we, we listen to the leader of the opposition. We listen to the leader of the opposition making outlandish claims here. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Every single government in the region came to the aid of, of the government in Dominica, Madam Speaker. As far as Trinidad in the south, to, to Bahamas in the north, every single, even, Madam Speaker, leaders of the opposition, you know, leaders, regional opposition leaders, mobilized resources and funds to help the government and people of Dominica in their time of greatest need. I put out the same challenge that the leader of the opposition put to you, the $1,000. I will give any one of you all $1,000 if you can tell me anything that one of you all did to help a constituent after the hurricane. Man. Tell me, Madam Speaker. Tell me, Madam Speaker. Not one of them. Not a drain you cleared. Not a drain you cleared, Madam Speaker. Not a road you cleared, Madam Speaker. Not people you help, Madam Speaker. Nothing at all. Can you imagine, Madam Speaker? Nothing. We had Ophelia. And this government, this government, Madam Speaker, has had to face one disaster after another. 
and God bless every single time we have risen to the challenge and God bless we have overcome, Madam Sika. We have overcome. We had Ophelia in 2010 and I believe Ophelia that caused all the havoc in Massac, Massac and Canefield, yeah, Madam Speaker. We had the Christmas trough, Christmas in trough, caused how much destruct, destruct, um, destruction in Roseau, Madam Speaker, flooding. Erica wiped out Petit Savan and Jubik. And while we at it, that is why we at it, that is the work of the citizenship by investment program. Go up to Bellevue Chopin now and look at the magnificent work done by this government. But it is there for all to see. Regional politicians are acclaiming the work by the government of Dominica, Madam Speaker. I was looking at it at at online, Madam Speaker, and I saw a regional politician admonishing his government about their use of the citizenship by investment funds. He's saying to them, do like Dominica. Build homes for your people. That is what we are doing. But you know the track record of the United Workers Party. They tried to build two sets of homes. One in Marigot and one in Stock Farm. And before the buildings were up, the sea water, the sea breeze, had rotted out. The, 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 huh? In, in Layuto? In Layuto? Thank you very much. Yes. Rotted out, Madam Sika. Madam Sika, Erica. Tropical storm Erica wiped out the renowned Jungle Bay. Totally wiped out Jungle Bay. We should be here right now celebrating the opening of the new Jungle Bay. That's what we should be doing. Go on the record. Go on the record and celebrate the new Jungle Bay. And I met the Senator there at the opening and I whispered in the Senator's ear. I tell him, Senator, make sure you go on record. As, 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 as welcoming and congratulating the developer. Distance yourself from the words of the leader of the opposition who told the developer, do not build, do not rebuild the hotel because you will make Roosevelt scary to look good. I mean, I mean that, is, that is a statement for a statesman to make. Don't build, and now the hotel has been built and is expanding and creating employment for people in the area. Mansika, that is the work of the citizenship by investment. That is what we are using it to do, Madam Speaker. That is the work of this government. Proper management, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the economy, in spite of Hurricane Maria, the economy is set to grow. And this is figures, facts and figures. And they can be verified. The economy is set to grow. And that is because of proper management of the economy. That is why the economy is set to grow, Madam Speaker. And we will continue to grow from strength to strength, Madam Speaker. Because our, our leader and this government, Madam Speaker, is well respected in the regional and international community. I mean, look at, look at the monies that we are receiving from the World Bank. The World Bank is not afraid to deliver us. The, 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 the World Bank chief came here, Madam Speaker. And she said that she was proud of the work of this government, Madam Speaker. Since Hurricane, it's almost a miracle what we have been able to do to turn our almost well. Well, it, is a, a, it was a miracle. It was a miracle, Madam Speaker. We stand for professionalism, Madam Speaker. The, the leader of the opposition talking about professionalism in government, Madam Speaker. And we know of the record of the opposition. We know of the record of the opposition. The leader of the opposition was in Salisbury singing that stones will rain down on the police. Cool wash will rain down on the police, Madam Speaker. That is, that is, the, that is the record of the United Workers Party. You want to live in harmony with nature, Madam Speaker? You want to live in harmony with nature? That is the same United Workers Party when they were in office talking about they were mining for copper, you know. Mining in Dominica for copper, you know. That is what is that, that is their record in government, you know. That is the record in government, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we are on a right track. We are on the right track, Madam Speaker. The people of Dominica know that this government is on the right track, Madam Speaker. The people of this government. The people of this country have confidence in this government. And when we tell them we will build the Marigot Hospital, we will build the Marigot Hospital without a shadow of a doubt. And you know why I'm telling you that, Madam Speaker? Because we told them that after the United Workers Party had destroyed the Windsor Park, 
We told them that when we got to government, we will build the national stadium for them, Madam Speaker. And when the Prime Minister announced that he had gotten $300 million from the People's Republic of China, they laughed at us. They scoffed at us. Just like they did yesterday when the Prime Minister spoke about the international airport. They laughed and they scoffed at us. But Madam Speaker, today, the people of Dominica can go and sit in the stadium and watch international cricket. Now, it is there for all to see. The people of Dominica, Madam Speaker, you can look out the window and see the state house, Madam Speaker, was built by this government, Madam Speaker. You can travel from Portsmouth to Roseau on the People's Republic of China highway built and now being repaired, Madam Speaker. And these three bridges, Madam Speaker, the member for Salisbury traverses that bridge, Madam Speaker, every day. Every one, one, well, you must come to Portsmouth to see the two others. Two of them in your constituency, man. Two of them in your constituency. Madam Speaker, it would, it would do the members of the opposition well to do them better. It would give them more credibility. If they would stand and say, well, I, I, I understand that you had to do this and you did that. But I wouldn't do it like that. I wouldn't do X. I would do Y. Balancing. But to not, but to deny, to come here and to deny in the face of all the overwhelming evidence that we see around us that this government has not performed optimally, Madam Speaker, is really bordering on hypocrisy. It's really bordering on hypocrisy. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in agriculture, Madam Speaker, the record of this government is clear, Madam Speaker. Dominica is the, Dominica is the highest producing agricultural economy in the OECS today. Highest producing agriculture. And Madam Speaker, and the leader of the opposition seems to like um, Facebook and, and, and recordings. I don't know why. But he puts his foot in his mouth every time he does a recording. I happened to be preparing for the, for the budget debate, Madam Speaker, a few days ago in my office, late in the night. And I took a break and I'm looking at my phone, Madam Speaker, and I'm seeing the leader of the opposition with a farmer in Marigot. The farmer is not from Marigot, but in Marigot, with a van load of 2,000 pounds of yams, Madam Speaker. 2,000 pounds, and the farmer is saying that he generates that 2,000 pounds of yam on a weekly basis. Now, the last time I checked in the pack house, I called immediately and I checked Bristol and the guys. Yams were being sold for about $2 a pound. $2 a pound by 2,000 pounds a week, Madam Speaker. Is, you understand what I'm talking about? A month, Madam Speaker. A year, that farmer, Madam Speaker, has eclipsed my salary by about two or three times, Madam Speaker. That is the work of agriculture under this government. This government, Madam Speaker. We're not, we not, we not promising people a dollar upon a banana, you know. We're not promising people, you know, Madam Speaker. We're delivering to the people of Dominica, Madam Speaker. That is what this government is doing, Madam Speaker. 30,000 plantlets. They claim to be the banana party. This government, they, they, they kill bananas, they kill, and I wish I had the time to go into the analysis of what you all did to DBGA and DBMC and DPEX, Madam Speaker, and the member for Rosso North was, a, was, a, was a, key, a key component, a director of DPEX. The member, the member, please contain yourself. No, 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 you are entertaining yourself. You're, I don't think you're ter entertaining. Destroyed the banana industry, completely destroyed the banana industry in government and out of government. Destroyed the banana industry, Madam Speaker, and it took this government, Madam Speaker, to cause a resurgence in the in the banana subsector, Madam Speaker, and a revitalization of the agricultural economy of this country, Madam Speaker. Thirty-two acres, thirty-two acres of white potatoes yielding two hundred and ninety-five thousand. Pounds of potato to plant it by our farmers in Dominica. Thirty-two, Madam Speaker, two hundred and ninety-five thousand pounds of potato. I mean, just don't will be self-sufficient. I mean, we were talking about eggs yesterday. 
And I mean, hardly two years after Hurricane Maria destroyed us, we are again self-sufficient in egg production in Dominica. In 1994, between 1994 and 1999, agriculture generated about what? $97 million. $97 million a day about Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, by 2018, Madam Speaker, and had it not been, had it not been, for Hurricane Maria, Madam Speaker, we will be, we'll be way gone, we'll be further than that. We'll be further than that. In 2018, Madam Speaker, we generated $227 million in agriculture. $227 million in agriculture, Madam Speaker. This is the work of this government. And the, the, the member for Mary God, the opposition, I would touch healthcare. I wouldn't touch, I'll be strategic, politically strategic, I wouldn't touch healthcare. Because everybody would laugh at you, you know it's a joke. If you look at the first wing of the new Chinese Friendship Hospital that's already completed up in Goodwill, and you come in here speaking about health care. Madam Speaker, when the United Workers Party was in government between 95 and 2000, they imposed on the backs of, this, of the people of this country a hospital user fee. So you have to, you have to, pay, a, you have to pay a fee. Like you were going to Arawak or you were going to New Town Savannah to, to have a show or a movie. We just have a theatre open. One of the new businesses open now in Dominica because of this government that theatre, the previous city world. You have to pay an entrance fee. When you went to Princess Margaret Hospital in 95 or 2000, if you do have larger shesh in your pocket, man, speaker, you would have died outside the door of the princess. <laughs> died man, outside the door. Today, this government, man, speaker, we are, the first thing we did when we came to office, we removed the hospital user fee. Yes. And not only did we remove the hospital user fee, we went further, Madam Speaker, and we say everybody over the age of 60, no charges, no fees, nothing at the hospital. Every young person under the age of 16, Madam Speaker, you can walk into any healthcare facility in Dominica and receive the services free of charge, Madam Speaker. And I believe that we had even extended that to the Kalinago people too. Yes. And while I'm on that, I want to congratulate the young Kalinago chief. And I, I want to endorse the words of the Prime Minister and identify with them that the young Kalinago chief will have all of the support that he needs to ensure that his reign and his term is an absolute success under this government. Because our record when it comes to the Kalinago people cannot be challenged at all. Our record is clear on the Kalinago. I don't, I don't need to digress and go into that. Our record is clear on the Kalinago people. One thing that the United Workers Party tried to do for the Kalinago people was a water, a water project, and that ended up in fiasco. Yeah. So we'll not go there. I don't want to digress. Let us just stay on course, Madam Speaker. Our record is clear, Madam Speaker, on that. Madam Speaker, we're expanding the, and while I'm on that, I'm, I'm happy that we are going to expand and upgrade the Reginald Fitzgerald Armour Hospital, which is the Postma Hospital. We're going to upgrade it and we're going to expand it because we have the hotels coming, Madam Speaker. We have Kempinski, which will be open, the 161 rooms, which will be open in October. And the last time I checked, if you want to book a room, Madam Speaker, now, between November, between October when they open and November, Madam Speaker, the place is full, it's booked out, Madam Speaker. That is the work of the government, Madam Speaker. And while I'm on that, you know, things keep coming to mind. Keep things coming to mind, Madam Speaker. It was the same United Workers Party. Had the United Workers Party had the competence, Madam Speaker, we would have had the Layu River Hotel years ago. Years ago, Madam Speaker. By the same leader of the opposition, Madam Speaker, who went on a wild goose chase. He went as far as the Privy Council, Madam Speaker, in England to defend himself, Madam Speaker. We know the records associated with United Workers, but unsuccessfully, we know of the records associated with the United Workers Party and the demise of the Lyon River Hotel. But now we come to show you all how it is done. And you're not sitting in humility and learning, Madam Speaker, what we have done. What we have done with the Kepinski Hotel Balance Speaker is nothing short of miraculous. And the Moroccan will be finished soon. The Moroccan will be finished soon, Madam Speaker. The Moroccan Hotel is well on its way to, to completion, Madam Speaker. And Secret Bay, because of this government again, Madam Speaker, 
the secret bay hotel has not only rebuilt and that is investor confidence you know in our government yes. that's investor confidence but don't don't forget after hurricane maria these people could have put their check in their pocket and check in their pocket and move on with their lives you know but they believe in this government they believe in the government that is why madam speaker they have decided to reinvest because they understand and they know that the future is bright and we have a better future with labor madam speaker that is the work of this government and again madam speaker i don't want to digress but i feel sometimes it's important to take on the opposition madam speaker when they speak about ross university the other university left madam speaker the other university left because they left madam speaker it had nothing to do with us madam speaker but madam speaker because of this government madam speaker in October, Madam Speaker, we have a new university that will be established in Picard. Madam Speaker, in Picard, Madam Speaker. And they went and, and they went to Portsmouth celebrating. And every time something happens in this country that is bad, the leader, the opposition members celebrate. I mean, how you can do that to your country? Every misfortune in this country. Erica they celebrated. Maria the celebration, Madam Speaker. Every misfortune. The university left. The university left. They went down the Portsmouth to celebrate, Madam Speaker. I mean, uh, even in, I mean, come on. They were in Portsmouth, Madam Speaker. Just a minute. Just a minute, please, the member. You will have your turn to speak. Can you contain yourself? But I wish I could buy a bottle of contain yourself and give each of you a look. <laughs> Every challenge in this country, the, the, the opposition members want to celebrate, Madam Speaker. Every challenge. But God, God, as God is on our side, Madam Speaker, and when God before you, nobody can be against you, Madam Speaker. That is why Dominica will continue to grow from strength to strength under this Dominica Labour Party led government, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the leader of the opposition say, the more money government receives, the worse our people get. I mean, that is a statement for you to make, Madam Speaker. Look at what we have, I mean, look at that. In education, Madam Speaker, we have built the Dominica State College. We are the ones who built the Dominica State College. When I went to the Clifton Dupini Community College, there were only about 60 of us who could get in there. And, and not that other students were not bright and other students were not doing well. But the building, they had no space, Madam Speaker, to take more students. Today, every single student living in a secondary school who wants to enter the Dominica State College have free passage to the college, Madam Speaker. And not only do they have free passage to the college, we have abolished fees at the college. Two dates that I remember, Madam Speaker. The abolition of slavery and the abolition of Dominica State College fees, Madam Speaker. And, and the leader of the opposition is so out of touch, out of touch with reality, He's saying a while ago there that he will pay for every student to go to the Dominican State College. I mean, come on, no man. I mean, I mean, I mean, really? Really, Madam Speaker? But they don't have no fees to pay, so what will you pay? I mean, he sat there, Madam Speaker, and he took up the better part of two hours. And there is not one single solid. Oh, it's one, one. There is one. He spoke about a tree lakes project. In, in, um, in, in, in the valley, truly, not one solitary proposal you can bring to this table. I mean, at least, Madam Speaker, in 1995, in the 1995 campaign, I remember the um, former Senator um, Fountain speaking about um, Fetty Vet perfume and, 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 and um, another one, goat milk, goat cheese, goat cheese. I mean, come and say that, say something, about that. but not one, not one solitary proposal you can say, okay, okay, the Honorable Prime Minister say X, okay, I don't believe that that is the way to go, I think we should do Y, the people of Dominica listen to you, and that is the alternative government that we are proposing in this country, Madam Speaker, that is the alternative government, you will enact fiscal responsibility legislation, this government's record on fiscal responsibility is impeccable, Madam Speaker, it's impeccable. It's impeccable, Madam Speaker. 
the regional and international community will tell you that when I speak up, talking about fiscal responsibility and making it sound like a big term so that people don't understand what we're talking about. But you are the, you are the, he's the chairman of the public accounts committee. So he can come to the house and ask any question of any minister of government and we are obliged by law to answer you, man and seeker. He can ask for any document, man. And he comes again and again. He pads his response with, with, with stuff, Madam Speaker, that we have addressed already. Also, the issue. You come talking about, about Venezuela. And we, we, we addressed that already. We told you that the original arrangement was to pay 60% and you keep 40% as a savings that you can use on social programs. Madam Speaker, we told you that. We have said that in this house time and time again. Nauseam, you come in here and implying that there is some untoward thing about Petro Caribbean. All the like children in primary school right now, Masika, understand the Petro Caribbean arrangement. Masika, no secret. Masika, everybody knows that Masika. Masika, a budget. You know, and, and the leader of the opposition is speaking like, you know, the money is sitting there. So the monies that we propose in this budget that we will raise from the citizenship by investment program is like it's there, it's waiting. It's in a piggy bank, it's, it's, it's in the treasury, and he will just come and he'll just use it. That, that tells me that he doesn't understand the fundamentals of the program. When he come here and he tries to use the gazette, he say, well, the gazette say, you have how many applicants? And the, and the, and the estimates say you have, but you have different arrangements under the program. You, you can, you can um, apply as a family, Madam Speaker. And all of the members of the family will be listed in the Gazette. It doesn't mean that every member of the family had to pay an individual 75,000 miles speaker. I mean, I mean those, those things are easy to understand because they do not read, Madam Speaker. They do not read. And even when they read, they do not understand what they are reading, Madam Speaker. That is, that is what it is, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in tourism, we, we, we have spoken about the international airport, I've, I've addressed the international airport. But before we built the airport, Madam Speaker, we had to do the hotels. Because when the people start coming, Madam Speaker, we want to know that we have the place to put them. And, and of the quality of the place. That is why we did not put the cat before the horse. And we always told Dominicans, you know. And it's good to be around for a long time, you know. Because you remember stuff. From the, from the word go, Madam Speaker, when we entered government and the issue of the international airport came up, we always told the taxpayers of Dominica that we, we will only build an international airport if it is not a burden to the taxpayers. We said that, Madam Speaker. And that is why today we can build the international airport and not one dollar in taxes have to be raised for the payment of that international airport. Not one dollar has to be raised, Madam Speaker, for the payment of that. Inter and we, we, we're going further, Madam Speaker. We're going further with it. We are saying that we decided that we will build a cruise spot when we can own the cruise spot, Madam Speaker. We've always said that. We don't want to do like the other countries and sell out our birthright to the FCC, Madam Speaker, the Cruise Association. When, when the leader of the opposition compares what is happening in St. Kitts, as he has done, in the cruise industry, as to what is happening in Dominica, every piece of infrastructure in Point, Point Zante, it's called, is owned, Madam Speaker, by the Cruise Association. But we have said, Madam Speaker, that we will build the infrastructure and we will offer it to the cruise lines, Madam Speaker. So when they come, we will partner with the cruise lines, Madam Speaker. You do not understand the program. If you would stay quiet for one minute, you would learn, you know. If you would stay quiet for one minute, you would learn something, Madam Speaker. You would learn. But you refuse to be quiet, Madam Speaker. You refuse to be quiet, Madam Speaker. So you cannot learn. Appointment in the public service, but the budget, Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister went through it yesterday. And he told you about the, the arrangements for the nurses. Specialized nurses and where they coming to the teachers? Wait, wait, let's deal with the nurses. Wait. The nurses, Madam Speaker, the new structure that we're going to employ, Madam Speaker. The Prime Minister already enunciated that. We went again in education. We told you about the teachers, the, the principal, 
the two deputy principals, what they will be in charge of, and, 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 and that will be made by appointment, Madam Speaker. So today, for the leader of the opposition to come and tell us about appointments in the public service, Madam Speaker, what is he talking about? What exactly is he talking about, Madam Speaker? And, and, and they, you know, they banding about this issue about... He doesn't understand the process. He doesn't understand. He's never been in government. It's one thing to be in opposition and to be on the side of the run your mouth, you know. But when you sit down in government, when you're in the cabinet, Manasika, and you have to make decisions that affect the running of the public service, you have to understand the intricacies and the fundamentals of the public service. And it's clear that the leader of the opposition doesn't understand those things. Man. He doesn't understand the Manasika. Manasika, and, you know, another... Another issue that they're trying to make heavy weather of Manasika is the minimum wage. And the Prime Minister addressed the whole issue of the minimum wage when he spoke yesterday, Manasika. He addressed the issue. Manasika, the, the, the minimum wage, the first, the first government that revised the minimum wage was the Dominica Labour Party administration, Manasika. In 2008, in 2008, we were the ones who revised the minimum wage. And the minimum wage. And the time that the minimum wage was ever dealt with before that was 19 years. 19 years before that the minimum wage was addressed, Madam Speaker. And we were the ones. Never touched, never touched it. You were there. Never touched it, Madam Speaker. It was this government who did it, Madam Speaker. And we put in new rates. And, and the Prime Minister promised that the new rates will take effect from 1st January 2020. So there is, there is nothing... Really, there's nothing new that the leader of the opposition have told us in his budget response. Absolutely nothing new. We, tell, we, we, we spoke about the decriminalization of marijuana. So because we speak about the decriminalization of marijuana, he come in and he says, you legalize marijuana. Play politics. From day one, Madam Speaker, we said, we will look at the issues. We did the consultations. We did the consultations, we went to the public, we looked at all of the facts, we had the commission report from the, 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 the carriage CARICOM who did the report, we looked at the report, and we are taking a responsible approach, Madam Speaker, to the decriminalization of marijuana. And, and, and you know, and, and the, 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 the leader of the opposition is, 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 is pandering to the public when he believes that you will just um, um, legalize marijuana and you'll be able to sell marijuana in bags. All over the world. Where you will sell the marijuana to? Where you sell it to? Like bananas, you just sell marijuana. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that's the height of irresponsibility. <laughs> yes. You know, like, like watercress and lettuce in the market. You just sell marijuana. Order, 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 please. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, this government, this government will go down in history as the housing government in Dominica. The housing government in Dominica. What we have done before the hurricane was phenomenal in housing. When we started on the um, Deputy Prime Minister, when we started with the regularization of squatter dollars, square foot, and we went up until we got to the um, pit latrine eradication, that in itself already was absolutely phenomenal. But squatter regularization and blah, blah, blah. blah and, but, Madam Speaker, what we have been able to do after Hurricane Maria, Madam Speaker, is nothing short of phenomenal, miraculous, Madam Speaker. Miraculous. You have five minutes left. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be okay. $86 million spent on re-roofing and renovating all over the country to the point where the leader of the opposition doesn't even know that work was done in Marigot, Madam Speaker. $1 million was spent in Marigot. And there is about six hundred thousand dollars now sitting in the Marigot um, 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 Tong, um, Village Council, and the leader of the opposition is yet to knock one nail to a galvanize in Marigot, Madam Speaker. One thousand and sixty-eight new homes, Madam Speaker, are being built right now as we speak. I believe in Georgetown. 
in, in, in the next few weeks, Madam Speaker, 78 apartments will be completed, the first 78, and will be handed over, and I can go to, to Cassie Bruce, the same thing will happen up there, I can go to Grand Four, I can go to, to Lackley. I mean, this housing revolution is spreading like wildfire, and I heard the Prime Minister even announce another wave of homes to come in, in, in different parts of the country, Madam Speaker. There is nowhere else I challenge anybody within the sound of my voice, Madam Speaker. There's nowhere else right now in the OECS where that kind of housing revolution is taking place, Madam Speaker. I challenge nowhere else, Madam Speaker. And, and if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough, you're talking about no bid contracts? The United Workers Party gave a contract to a Trinidad firm, Madam Speaker, to do works in Watton Waven, and the Trinidad firm turned around and subcontracted the same contract to public works, Madam Speaker, and left the country three million dollars in their pockets, eighty percent less than the contract. And Zig Jordi today, man, in today, Madam Speaker, we cannot find the company. Zig Jordi, Madam Speaker, you talking about contracts? You talking about contracts, Madam Speaker? You talking about contracts? You talking about contracts, Madam Speaker? See the man learn, boy. Number two. Order, please. Yes, order, no, please. Contract, order, please. Huh? I'm really going contract, to see if I can get this bottle of continuous self. I'm going to Charlie's at lunchtime. We 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 have a we have a small business program right now. That's that's the envy of the Eastern Caribbean. A little money Taiwan had given us back then to put in at the aid bank so that a small business people could get a little money, man and sicker. All the hierarchy and the big wigs, man and sicker. Even people in cabinet, I get sued for that, so I have to watch how I frame that. Yeah. Right. I don't watch how I frame that. Yeah. Huh? Huh? The, prime, the then prime minister of the country applied to the aid bank for small business money under the venture capital fund, man and sicker. I pay him all his money already. I pay him all his money already. <laughs> Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I, I, I want to end, Madam Speaker, on a, on, a, on a great note, Madam Speaker, that really brings me a lot of personal satisfaction, Madam Speaker. Apart from my constituency and all that is happening first now, the hotels, the creation of employment, the new hospital to come, the, the homes at Georgetown, Madam Speaker, the courts, the tennis courts and the netball courts to come at the Benjamin Park. One of the projects in government, Madam Speaker, that brings me personal satisfaction is the geothermal development of the Commonwealth of <laughs> And, Madam Speaker, the World Bank has given us the all clear, Madam Speaker. And in fact, Madam Speaker, they, 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 we have gone out to bid already. Tenders are out, Madam Speaker, to bid for the building of the plant. And I want to tell you all here, a 16... Mr. Prime Minister, 16 companies have already bid it for the development of the plant, Mr. Speaker. 16 companies have registered to request the bid documents. They are interested in building the geothermal plant of Dominica, Madam Speaker. And in August, today is the last day of July. Next month, in a couple of weeks, Madam Speaker, they will be here. The bidders have to come down to Dominica. So people will see them. So you see, that is why when the leader of the opposition talking about things like pie in the sky, what we are doing is things you can see and you can feel and you can touch and you can smell. The bidders will be here and they will walk into the valley. They have to walk and go and visit the site where the geothermal plant will be built, Madam Speaker. Right? And they have to do that to be able to submit a realistic bid for the building of the plant, Madam Speaker. So that we will bring down the cost of electricity and the United Workers Party will go on record and be in history as the government that sold our utility, Dominica Electricity Services, sold it again, again for 30% of what it was worth, sold it. And they came to this house and they passed an act to guarantee Domlek 15% returns every year. That is that is the that is the that is the work of, of, of this government. And we hear now with this with this with this progressive, well thought out, brilliant put together budget that addresses all of the concerns of Dominicans, the little man, the middle class, the public servants, the business people, Manasika, um, the, the tourism industry, and you, you cannot find one solitary 
little points to Madam Speaker, advice or alternative, Madam Speaker. I sat down here, Madam Speaker, and I am absolutely proud to be part of this side of this honorable house. And in winding up, Madam Speaker, the work that this government has done, we do not need to be in here debating it. The people of Dominica can see it. They can see the work of this government. But I, that is why I spend time, whenever I get the opportunity, I spend time to let the people of Dominica know about the misdeeds of the opposition. Because the people who forget their history are doomed to repeat it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Sure, sure. Sure. Madam Speaker, having listened to a most brilliant setting aside of the rebuttal of this year's budget, I move that the House be suspended until 4 p.m. this afternoon. Seconded, Madam Speaker. At, it has been moved and seconded that this honorable house be suspended until 4 p.m. this afternoon. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? And I wish persons would sit until, because I see people moving about, one member in particular, but we'll deal with that at another time. I will repeat. It has been moved and seconded that this honorable house be suspended until 4 p.m. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The eyes have it. This honorable house stands suspended until 4 p.m. this afternoon. Speaker.